of Management Studies IGNU presents an audio book on the course MMPC 012 titled Strategic Management for MBA Program. Presenting Block 2 titled Environmental Analysis Unit 5 Competitive Analysis Objectives After reading this unit, you should be able to learn about competitive forces, understand the concept of competitive analysis, understand Porter's Five Forces Framework, know the role of strategic groups in competitive analysis, analyze the social media competitive analysis, and understand the competitive profile matrix, which is CPM. Now, introduction. In Unit 4, we have learned how the external environment is scanned. This unit is in continuation to the external analysis. In this unit, we will discuss the importance of competitive analysis in the external environment scanning and will learn different aspects of competitive analysis. We have seen that it is very important to identify the competitors and determine their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. This is the reason a proper competitive analysis is required. This unit discusses how the analysis goes beyond the scope of a single business unit and how strategic groups become important. The unit focuses on Porter's Five Forces model which describes the competitive analysis in detail. The unit also explains the competitive profile matrix. Overall, the unit gives a detailed description of competitive analysis through various modes. Now let us know what is competitive forces. Any organization can only be successful if it has the ability to formulate an effective strategy. This can be done by collecting all the relevant information about competitors and evaluate them to formulate their own strategy. It has been witnessed in many cases that identifying the competitors is quite difficult as number of organizations have divisions which compete in different industries which means that the businesses are diversified. Most of the organizations do not make the sales and profit information pubic due to competitive reasons. In present times, internet has become a major source for obtaining the information on the competitors. Now, competition in any industry is usually intense. In the past, many cases have been witnessed whereby the organizations have capitalized on the weaknesses of its competitors. Therefore, it is very important to understand the forces which are important for a competitive analysis. These are strength of the competitors, weaknesses of the competitors, objectives and strategies of the competitors, response of the competitor towards pestle factors, vulnerability of the competitors to alternative strategies of other organizations, vulnerability of the organizations to their alternative strategies, positioning of the products or services relative to major competitors, the status of entry and exit of new and old business organizations respectively, the key factors resulting in the present competitive position in the industry, trends of the sales and profits ranking of major competitors in the industry, supplier and distributor relationships in the industry, and threat to the competitors due to the substitute products or services. This is not an exhaustive list. However, this gives an idea about the competitive forces which are important in conducting a competitive analysis. Porter's Five Forces Framework Competitive analysis is one of the most critical parts of an organization's strategic plan. This involves identifying the strategies of the competitors to assess their strengths and weaknesses and thereby evaluating them. A proper evaluation of a competitor's strategy helps the organization 
in establishing the USP unique service proposition of its product or service. The evaluation of the competitors can be done by placing them in strategic groups which we will discuss in section 5.4 Porter's Five Forces model of competitive analysis is one of the most widely used approaches to develop strategies. The Five Forces framework developed by Michael Porter is the most widely known tool for analyzing the competitive environment, which helps in explaining how forces in the competitive environment shape strategies and affect performance. The framework as suggests that there are competitive forces other than direct rivals which shape us the competitive environment. These competitive forces are as follows. The rivalry among competitors in the industry, the potential entrants, the substitute products, the bargaining power of suppliers, the bargaining power of buyers. However, these five forces are not independent of each other. Pressures from one direction can trigger off changes in another which is capable of shifting sources of competition. In the following section, each of these five forces are discussed in detail so as to understand how each of these forces affect an industry's environment so that one can identify the most appropriate strategic position within the industry. Threat of new entrants Entry of a business organization in and operating in a market is seen as a threat to the established business organizations in that market. The competitive position of the established business organizations is affected because the entrants may add new production capacity or it may affect their market shares. They may also bring additional resources which, them, which may force the existing business organizations to invest more than what was not required before. Altogether, the situation becomes difficult for the existing business organizations if not threatening always and therefore they resort to raising barriers to entry. These barriers are intended to discourage new entrants and this may be done by organizations, be in any one or more ways as discussed below. Economies of scale Business organizations which operate on a large scale get benefits of lower cost of production because of the economies of scale. Since the new business organization normally would start its operation at a smaller scale, and therefore will have a relatively higher cost of production. Its competitive position in the industry gets adversely affected. This barrier created through large scale of operation is not only applicable for production side, but it can be extended to advertising, marketing, distribution, financing, after-sales customer service, raw material, purchasing and research and development as well. For example, you would have noticed in durable industry the kind of investments which players in the durable markets do on advertising and promotions normally and especially during events like World Cup cricket match. This makes it nearly impossible for any new third player to launch and sustain such intensive and investment-driven marketing attack. Learning or experience effect The theory explaining the experience curve or the learning curve suggests that as business organizations produce more, they grow more efficient and this brings them cost benefits. The efficiency levels achieved is an outcome of the experience, which teaches the organization better ways of doing things. This again keeps any new entrant at a disadvantage. Cost disadvantage independent of scale. New entrants may face disadvantages which are independent of the operations. It may be on account of the lack of proprietary product knowledge such as patents, favorable access to raw materials, favorable locations, existing plants built and equipped years earlier at lower cost, lower borrowing cost, etc. Brand Benefits Buyers are often attached to established brands. Differences in physical or mere perceived value make existing products unique and the new entrants have to really work hard to beat such brands and change the mindset of the customers. Capital requirement. High investment required for a startup in any business is another deterrent for new entrants bringing down the possibility of increased competition. Switching cost. Switching cost, which is nothing but the expenses, financial or psychological, which a customer incurs in switching from one seller to another. Cases where such an expense is higher, new entrants find it difficult to establish or survive. 
Such costs may be because of a strong brand association or the comfort level of a customer may be enjoying or it may be on account of a particular technology like different operating systems. Access to distribution channel Any such critical activity like distribution channel is the business can be a barrier for the entrants when accessibility to them is found to be difficult. Most existing business organizations in FMCG industry are found to have a strong favorable distribution channel which is very difficult to penetrate. Anticipated growth Incumbents in a rapidly growing market are less likely to respond to a new entrant when the market's growth offers enough opportunities to share. But a new entrant position will be opposite in a slowly growing market. In addition to the above, few general entry barriers exist in each industry's case. For example, regulatory policies, tariffs and international trade restrictions are few such additional factors. Now, bargaining power of suppliers. Business organizations have a large dependency on suppliers and the latter influence their profit potential significantly. Suppliers' decisions on prices, quality of goods and services and other terms and conditions of delivery and payments have significant impact on the profit trend of an industry. However, suppliers' ability to do all these depends on the bargaining power over buyers. Suppliers' bargaining power would normally depend on importance of the buyer to the supplier group. The size of the supplies taken by a particular buyer is likely to put the buyers in a relatively advantageous position. The same may be found true if the supplier tends to get an image advantage by supplying to a particular business organization. Consequently, in dealing with such buyers, suppliers' bargaining power is naturally reduced. Just opposite happens when buyer is not so important to the supplier and the latter then it's less likely to offer favorable terms to win or retain the customer. Importance of the supplier's product to buyers Here, the position may just be opposite of the above situation where suppliers have a better bargaining power coming from their sheer size or image. Greater concentration among suppliers than among buyers An industry which is largely dominated by a few large business organizations is a highly concentrated industry. Such few business organizations hold greater power with them as the proportion of the industry's total output is in hands of such large business organizations. This gives such business organizations greater power over those who do business with them. The converse is true when industry has low concentration in suppliers. A higher concentrated supplier position may be possible on account of the sources of raw materials available, R&D or patent rights available with fewer business organizations. High switching costs for buyers In this case, buyers suffer because of the supplier's advantageous position or, by the nature of supplies itself, the buyers have to face a higher switching cost. Credible threat of forward integration by a supplier Suppliers in a given situation may see an opportunity in moving up the value chain and may seriously think of getting into the business of what its buyers have been doing till now. Any indication of that nature from supplier side puts the buyers at the receiving end as they feel threatened because of a new player in that market and of losing an assured source of supplies. A recent example may be of an organization engaged in the petroleum sector which has decided to move from exploration and refining of oil to selling of oil through its own retail petrol pumps. Bargaining power of customers Customers with a stronger bargaining power related to their suppliers may force supply prices down or demand better quality for the same price and may demand more favorable terms of business. For instance, there will always be a difference in the bargaining power between an individual's buying different construction material like cement, steel or bricks and a real estate builder buying them for the number of properties he may have been building over so many years. Few of the following facts attach greater powers to buyers. Undifferentiated or standard supplies. A supplier given the nature of products its supplies may have a very limited choice in providing any differentiated products and this enables a customer to get the deal at the most favorable terms. In perfectly competitive market situations with large number of suppliers, prices automatically are at their lowest. Customers' Price Sensitivity 
customers buying behavior varies with respect to their sensitivity to prices. Depending on how important the item is for the customer's usage and proportions, he or she may be spending on the item concerned, buyer sensitivity to price varies. Any customer with high price sensitivity gains advantage in its bargaining power. Accurate information about the cost structure of suppliers. A more informed customer is capable of negotiating with suppliers. Whenever such customers notice a decline in the supplier's costs, they would always bargain for a proportional decrease in price. This aspect is more relevant in today's context of global markets where cost benefits can come from anywhere in the world at any point in time for various reasons. There may be a general decline in prices of a product in world market because of a glut situation or somewhere some new discoveries may have pulled the prices down. Greater concentration in buyer's industry than in supplier's industry and relatively large volume purchase. This means that buyers are large and more powerful than suppliers. Government departments like police department when negotiating for large orders of security weapons or intelligence equipments will necessarily command a greater hold than its suppliers, as there will be only few numbers of such institutions buying them at a given point of time. Credible threat of backward integration by buyers Different from forward integration which suppliers tend to attempt at, buyers in order to hold their position stronger in the market may integrate in backward manner. This will mean that the buyer extends itself to the previous stage of manufacturing or distribution for which it had been dependent on suppliers till now. An example could be of an entertainment channel which airs programs outsourced from organizations producing them outside, gets into the business of producing its programs in-house. Threat of Substitutes Often business organizations in an industry face competition from outside industry products which may be close substitutes of each other. For example, with the new technologies in place, now the electronic publishings are the direct substitutes of the text published in print. Similarly, newspapers find their closest substitutes in their online version, though it may be a smart strategic move to position them as complementary products. However, the competitive pressure which any industry may face depends primarily on three factors. Whether the substitutes available are attractively priced, whether buyers view substitutes available as satisfactory in terms of their quality and performance, how easily buyers can switch to substitutes. Generally, it is observed that the availability and acceptability of substitutes determine an upper price limit to a product. When relative prices of the product in question raise above that of the substitute products, customers tend to switch away from them. Competitive Rivalry the level of rivalry is lowest in a perfectly competitive market where there are large number of buyers and sellers and the product is uniform with everyone. Same is true for a monopoly market where there is only one player and the type of product is also one. However, in case of oligopoly or monopolistic competition, where you will find few players and the market condition allow them to differentiate their products and services, competition is found to be fierce. Few of the following factors explain the level of rivalry. The stability of environment An unstable environment is likely to call for a hyper-competitive situation and of the several factors that affect stability could be technological innovation, changes in government regulations, customers' profile and their needs. In an industry which witnessed high movements in terms of entry or exit, the rules of the game may change too frequently. One of such instances of fierce competition could be noticed on account of the onslaught of new technologies. The entry of new technology tends to intensify the rivalry between the players. The life expectancy of competitive advantage. There are industries, for example, consumer electronics or, or white goods, in which the fruits of innovations do not last longer and hence the companies do not even bother to patent them. This has an adverse implication for the stability of the competitive environment leading to intense rivalry. Length of innovation cycle, patent protection or switching cost between rivals are some factors which may impact the life expectancy of competitive advantage.
characteristics of the strategies pursued by competitors. This also has or may have an impact on the general approach to rivalry. For example, in a market segmented approach on part of the competitor leads to less rivalry. Also, the kind of goals which competitors pursue has an impact on the rivalry. Competitors pursuing the goal of increased market share will lead to increased rivalry again. Lastly, few, few implications can be picked up from the five forces framework itself. Lower threats to entry or a higher possibility for substitutes have the potential of increasing rivalry. A lower engagement between suppliers will result into a lesser rivalry, so will be the effect when buyers face higher switching cost. In an overall assessment, two critical observations regarding rivalry can be made here. First, a powerful competitive strategy employed by one rival can greatly intensify the competitive pressure on other rivals. Second, the frequency and rigor with which rivals use any or all competitive weapons at their disposal can be a major determinant of whether the competitive pressures associated with rivalry are cutthroat, fierce, strong, moderate or weak. Strategic Groups they are conceptual clusters in the sense that they are grouped together for purpose of improving analysis and understanding competition within their industry. They do not necessarily belong to any formal group, such as an industry, trade, association or any strategic alliances and they do not necessarily differ in their average profitability. Researchers have shown that industries vary greatly in the similarity of their business organizations in terms of strategies pursued and we need to analyze the two types of industries differently. For industries which are considered heterogeneous comprising multiple strategic groups, it would be inappropriate and misleading to combine different strategic groups in the same environmental analysis. For example, in a four-wheeler automobile industry, strategic groups can be thought of cars, multi-utility vehicles, MUVs, or sports car vehicles. Strategic groups are merely conceptual clusters in order to facilitate analysis and therefore the categorizing of business organizations may be in a way beneficial or insightful. Size of the business organizations may be one of the criterions when analysis is to be understood how giants differ from smaller business organizations. Geographic distribution, breadth of markets, products or services, quality may be few others to determine strategic groups. Furthermore, it often makes sense to use different combinations of strategic dimensions to more precisely identify groups. In a homogeneous industry, it is reasonable for all the competitors to be considered as part of the same strategic group in a single industry-wise analysis. Competitive Intelligence it is the information which is relevant to strategy formulation regarding the environmental context within which a business organization competes. Such intelligence has several uses and these are providing description of the competitive environment that inform strategist and guide strategy formulation, challenge common assumption about the competitive environment, forecasting future development in the competitive environment, Identifying and compensating for exposed competitive weaknesses. Determining when a strategy is no longer viable or sustainable. Indicating when and how strategy should be adjusted to changing competitive environment. Scenario Planning Scenarios are tools for ordering one's perceptions about alternative future environments in which today's decisions might be framed. In practice, scenarios resemble a set of stories, written or spoken, built around carefully constructed plots. These stories can express multiple perspectives on complex events. Scenarios give meaning to these events. Scenarios are powerful planning tools precisely because the future is unpredictable. Unlike traditional forecasting or market research, Scenarios present alternative images instead of extrapolating current trends from the present. 
Scenarios also embrace qualitative perspectives and the potential for sharp discontinuities that econometric models exclude. Consequently, creating scenarios requires decision makers to question their broadest assumptions about the way the world works so they can foresee decisions that might be missed or denied. Within an organization, scenarios provide a common vocabulary and an effective basis for communicating complex, sometimes paradoxical, conditions and options. Good scenarios are plausible and surprising. They have the power to break old stereotypes and their creators assume ownership and put them to work. Using scenarios is rehearsing the future. By recognizing the warning signals, the threats and opportunities that is unfolding, one can avoid surprises, adapt and act effectively. Decisions which have been pre-tested against a range of what may offer are more likely to stand the test of time, produce robust and resilient strategies and create distinct competitive advantage. Ultimately, the result of scenario planning is not a more accurate picture of tomorrow, but better thinking and an ongoing strategic conversation about the future. Example of scenario planning in an energy producing business organization. Understanding the business of an energy producing business organization and the environment it faces, scenario planning can be found useful in the following ways. Creating alignment between energy situation and business organization's vision and purpose. What is our 21st century business idea? Sparking innovation and new forms of value creation. What new products and services might replace the traditional one? It will involve many people with ability to perceive and or ability to act as effective participants in the process. It will provide space for multiple interpretations to make sense of what is happening. By including people from a broad spectrum of backgrounds, scenario planning will be capable of creating early breakthroughs in perception and understanding. Allowing the business organizations to get rid of the new environment it can't escape from. Implementation of Scenario Planning A company-wide involvement in scenario planning leads to better result in a business organization. A cross-functional team is instituted for the identification and monitoring of issues. Employees are encouraged to participate on an incentive-based process. The onus of refining and final implementation of the suggestions then lies on the cross-functional team. With the following steps indicated, you will be getting a better understanding of the whole process. Step 1. Identification of the issues Understand the effects of external factors on business and these factors can be technological-driven new product IT-based integration Political, deregulation or instability. Economic, sudden downturns or boom. Competitive positioning, moves from competitors. Participants need not limit themselves to above mentioned factors only. Any factor that may have an impact on the company is acceptable. Step 2. Classification of the issues. Support the issue identified with reports, propositions and any other method. Determine the uncertainty and kind of impact of the issue. Step 3. Analyzing and Problem Solving Based on above classification, a display board of the issues as per their classification can be used to communicate the issue to all and the following sequence can be taken for analysis and finding the solution to the problem. Social Media Competitive Analysis we now know the concept of competitive analysis. It is a kind of benchmark of the organization's performance against its competitors. In the present competitive world, the organizations are straining hard to stay ahead of the competition. Social media competitive analysis is one way to stay ahead of the competitors and gauge new opportunities and potential threats. Why is it necessary for organization to go for social media competitive analysis? Social media competitive analysis helps in identifying competitors on social media, knowing the social platforms the competitor are using, knowing the ways they are using these platforms, understanding the response towards the social strategy of the competitors, benchmarking the social results against the competition, identifying social threats, finding gaps of one's own social media strategy. This can be done using scenario planning techniques. 
the steps used in social media competitors analysis are determine the competitors information gathering swot analysis up to date information there are many tools which helps the organization to develop their social media visibility and perform the competitive analysis competitive profile matrix competitive profile matrix cpm is a strategic management tool used to compare the organization with its competitors it tries to highlight the strong and weak points of the organization relative to its competitors this tool is used to understand the external environment in a better way this involves four steps which are as follows identify critical success factors assign a weight to each critical success factor assign the ratings to each organization and assign a score to each organization now let us discuss these steps in brief identify critical success factors csfs csfs as the name suggest are the key focus areas where which determine the success of an organization in a particular industry these areas can be internal as well as external in nature these factors vary among industries and also in the strategic groups since these factors include internal as well as external issues the rating include the strengths and weaknesses assign a weight to each critical success factor the weights are assigned to each csf from 0.0 least important to 1.0 highly important this indicates the degree of importance to a particular factor assign the ratings to each organization the ratings as mentioned earlier means the range from 4 to 1 The rating scale and its meaning is given below. Four is major strength. Four is equals to major strength. Three is equals to minor strength. Two is equals to minor weakness, and one is equals to major weakness. The ratings and weights should be assigned to each organization subjectively. This can be done using benchmarking. Assign a score to each organization. The last step in performing CPM is assigning a score to each organization. This is done by multiplying the rating with the assigned weights that is score is equals to weights assigned into rating assigned then the total score of the organization is calculated total score is the sum total of all the individual scores of organizations then the scores of each organization are compared and the one with the highest total score is perceived to be stronger than its competitors cpm in general provides more internal strategic information and helps the organization in design making summary the competitive analysis in an organization is based on the assessment of its external environment in this unit we have discussed various aspects of competitive analysis the focus is on the five forces framework which helps us in understanding any industry by identifying the strength of each of the five forces and the nature of competitive pressure that each force generates it also enables an understanding of the overall structure of competition the competitive structure of an industry sounds unattractive when rivalry among organizations are strong there exists low entry barriers and substitutes are more common along with when both suppliers and buyers command a higher bargaining power in case of reverse position the competitive structure is found to be lucrative the competitive profile matrix has been discussed to understand as to how the competitive analysis is performed we were listening to the audio book by the school of management studies ignu for mba program course code mmpc012 titled strategic management course coordinator professor neeti agrawal voice over by chitra gore edited by ashok sharma program assisted by tarannam jaha program produced by dr manoj kumar singh 
This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University. Thank you.